Hello, we are midway through our first season of All Things Delivered, and our focus moves to overland transportation. Stick with us to find out how cloud computing solves for the chronic driver shortage plaguing the industry by enabling effortless decision-making and real-time collaboration. Technology innovation has never moved as fast as it is today, and it will never move this slow again. So now is the time to accelerate your supply chain transformation at the speed of AWS. Join us to explore the supply chain of the future today. On this part of our season-long look at the supply chain of the future, we focus on intermodal transportation and middle mile. Solutions like Amazon Relay are striving to make the driver experience safe, pleasant, and productive. Let's look at how cloud-based mobile applications can leverage services like Lambda, Kinesis, and DynamoDB to radically transform tracking operations. Later, I'll be joined by our subject matter experts, Kimberly Agerty and Michael Lingardia, to discuss more in-depth supply chain technologies into our Supply Chain Insights Roundtable. But now, let's start with the manifest section of our show, and we're going to be joined by the Amazon Relay team to learn more about their super cool and clever mobile application. Andrew, it's great to have you here. Thank you. So what, what is Amazon Relay? So Amazon Relay is a mobile app. It sits in the truck with the driver. It's with them throughout their day. And this is their, this is their connection point back to Amazon. It's the way that they tell us how things are going. And it's the way that we can tell them uh, anything that might affect their trip, like any adjustments to their schedule or any alerts that we may want to send about safety issues like weather or traffic. So this really provides that bi-directional communication channel to the driver and gives us a way to help them be successful in executing their trips. So this, uh, this concept of bi-directional communication is, is very interesting. What, what are the uh, um, technological challenges that you had to solve to enable it? Well, one is relatively straightforward with uh, services like Pinpoint. It's push notification of stuff to the driver. We need to tell them about a change to their schedule, or we need to tell them about an important safety message, or inform them about like load-specific instructions that may be special to the site that they're visiting. So we have systems in our backend that can uh, collect those messaging signals and pass them through to the driver uh, as push notifications. And they're displayed in different ways depending on if the driver's in transit or not, because we don't want to distract them. We also have uh, systems for the driver to source data back to us. So they're, they're generating signals all the time, like they've checked into a site, they've uh, started navigation, this is the route that they're taking. We pass those things back to our teams internally through API Gateway and federate them out so that other people can take action uh, if needed based on the signals that the drivers are generating. And you're using also a queuing architecture with uh, Amazon SQS, helping you to achieve this uh, way to collect information from drivers, right? Right. We do collect a lot of information from the driver. We also have a lot of information generated internally by planning systems or by other um, parts of our middle mile system architecture. Uh, we tend to broadcast those things out internally over SNS to make sure other teams can react to them as needed. And we'll always stick a queue in front of our SNS topics to make sure that we can smooth out the curve if we have a very bursty client um, or catch dead letters or anything of that nature. So we are in the space of uh, middle mile and intermodal transportation, where uh, businesses are seeking as an outcome uh, more loads delivered per driver per mile per day. Uh, uh, how is Amazon Relay helping uh, businesses and drivers uh, to be more productive? The place that Amazon really, really comes in here is like giving us a way to uh, consolidate all the all the data, all the functions that the driver needs to do throughout the day that aren't driving into one app and providing them streamlined workflows that let them spend more of their time focused on driving and less time focused on juggling apps, managing paperwork, spending time on the phone, that, that sort of thing. One of the really interesting use cases, I think, for this kind of uh, push notification or internal uh, internal messaging of data is around driver availability. This is where we build a real-time model of our network that we can interrogate to ask questions about who can take work on this day at this time uh, under these constraints. There could be constraints on the, the load itself, like where it's going. If it's going to a seaport, it might require certification um, or it may require, require special equipment, for example. And we need to understand of our you know, tens of thousands of loads, hundreds of thousands of drivers, which are suited to each other. And we need to make that decision in real time. So what we'll do is we'll collect all these data signals both internally and from drivers uh, using the Relay app, process them through Lambdas into a model of our network. And we load that model continuously into a, a Fargate-based service that can then answer questions about 
uh, who's eligible to do what work at what time, and if they take it, like what's the downstream impact on their calendar later in the week. Um, and that also enables use cases like finding gaps in the driver's calendar that we can fill in with extra work to keep them keep them busy more of the time. What well, is the speed at which should deliver a, you know, a, a calculation from your model since everything is in memory? Keeping everything in memory lets us evaluate thousands of drivers per second against any question that we might ask, um, which is, it's fast enough to serve the, the sort of the purposes that we have um, and uh, allows us to sort of make real-time decisions in a way that we would not be able to uh, using batch processes or other technology. The other aspect of this that's really interesting is that the data has to be real-time. The context for asking the question of our model is we want to change the calendar on one of these drivers. But we need that data to reflect in the next question that we ask because we've just changed the state of the world a little bit. Um, so really important in this design is making sure that the data flows through and is, is brought into our model as efficiently as possible. And this is another area where we get a lot of benefits out of uh, technologies like SNS, DynamoDB, and Kinesis um, in creating that pipeline of data back into the system. Uh, what, 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 the, what is the way you're using Kinesis? Well, we use Kinesis as part of like a two-level cache architecture. So our level one cache is in memory as part of our service. We keep an entire model of our network in memory at all times. That, me that memory model is loaded continuously through a Kinesis stream um, off of a DynamoDB table. And the benefit of doing it this way is that we're, we have a continuous flow of new data and new signal into our, into our model, and it just kind of happens. Um, we don't have to spend a lot of time uh, or energy setting up any of those infrastructure components to make it happen, and they all scale independently, so we can just focus on uh, implementing the business rules around driver assignments and driver availability that we care about. So use uh, auto-scaling and uh, self-managed services to enable you know, uh, a quick adjustment depending on the volume and the number of drivers that you are having using your application. There's an ebb and flow to the data throughout the day. Uh, sometimes are more busier than others. We'll get more signal. Um, and the benefits of these technologies, things like SQS, SNS, Kinesis, DynamoDB, they all scale uh, independently of any action that we take. The data comes in uh, at a higher volume, they'll scale up to, uh, to accommodate. And if it's coming in at a lower volume, they'll scale down to accommodate. All those things happen in parallel. We're loading them in parallel. We process them in parallel through lambdas. They can all operate independently and scale independently. And then we load them in parallel into our containers so that we have uh, this continuous view of, of data that's coming in. And any change within our network can reflect in our model within one or two seconds. But this next, what is the next uh, uh, value proposition you're going to bring to, to drivers? Supporting drivers who run into problems on the road. There are a lot of things that can happen in the real world. Equipment can break down, uh, driver can run out of hours of service. A lot of things can happen. Uh, today, a lot of these things require a phone call for the driver to fix. And that's a lot of time that they're spending uh, on the phone and not on the road. And so what we're looking to do is build more mechanisms for the driver to trigger automated resolution of those problems. Send us a signal that says, uh, your load is disrupted, and let's replan it and get you back on the road as quickly as possible without requiring you know, the, the 20 minutes on the phone with somebody. Andrew, thank you so much for sharing your insight and good job to you and uh, uh, the Amazon Relay team. Yeah, thank you. What I would like to explore with you, Kimberly, is uh, uh, how Amazon Relay helps uh, companies like CPGs uh, or retailers uh, or also com logistic companies managing a fleet of trucks uh, in, in terms of optimization of their middle mile. What is your perspective on that? Well, the line of business is really evolving from a business model standpoint, from a B2B to B2B standpoint. And as such, that middle mile needs to evolve with it. So now you have a different types of contracting mechanisms that companies are using for the middle mile. They're owning their own transport services. They're outsourcing those transport services. And now they're really stepping it up a notch with enabling and ingesting the ability to crowdsource, which is really expanding the potential from a productivity and efficiency standpoint. This takes away a lot of complexity uh, uh, from the driver uh, by enabling them to take smarter decisions. But yet this implies that we take away the complexity and we create a sophisticated uh, application and a sophisticated backend infrastructure to handle on behalf of the driver a lot of decisions. And data. So I think they're they're basically allowing, you know, the ability to 
allow drivers to participate in the overall economy of, of freight and to be able to choose their own ways and therefore improve their driver experience. So they can pick their own OD pairs. They can pick when they're going to be home. They can decide what revenue they want to be able to get, how complex of a load they want to go off and get. Um, and so this provides some driver choice and therefore expands the amount of drivers that are available. From a technology point of view, I think having a mobile application and making everything mobile centric and having the information all in one place really improves the ability for the driver interaction so that he knows where he's going, when he's going, he can see the invoice, he knows he's going to get paid. All those types of things provide security and increases his desire to participate in the overall ecosystem. So the driver productivity really feeds that top-level line of network optimization and network efficiency, which really boils down simply to supply chain resiliency, enabled by the middle mile. So supply chain resiliency at network level. So it's kind of a network level form of intelligence. And I guess you need to use a, a totally different kind of a system architecture, a totally different kind of infrastructure to enable a, a high speed uh, and a high volume data-driven decision-making. So I think you want to innovate very quickly in a mobile environment, and you also want to be able to leverage existing systems. So you know, being able to have uh, an architecture that's centric around, let's say, app mesh, and being able to pull in those services dynamically, and being able to allow those teams to have less friction between them and less dependencies between them, and therefore innovate faster, you know, provides a, a way for you to keep up with the innovation speed that mobile users sort of expect. So what you're saying is basically that uh, Amazon Relay uh, and, and their uh, very clever approach helps not only on the, uh, on the front end drivers to be more productive, but also on the back end DevOps team uh, to be more productive as well. Yes. So we have seen how uh, we can uh, add drivers to be more productive, uh, and this drives an increase on the overall business productivity, even at network level. But this creates more complexity in the back end. So we need to adopt uh, new technologies uh, like App Mesh. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, an event-driven architecture to make possible that the, the business is, uh, uh, is supported in the right way. Thank you, Kimberly and Michael, for joining us during our Supply Chain Insight segment. I would like to close this super insightful episode with three key takeaways. First, minimize complexity. Empower drivers with prescriptive decision-making tools to make them more productive and reduce churn. Next, Benefit from efficiency at the network level. Enable coordinated decision-making across your entire supply chain by interconnecting stakeholders. And finally, avoid the pain of unnecessary change management. Consider, for instance, a mobile application with geofencing features and real-time integration with existing logistics and transportation software. Our season is getting more and more compelling. Join us again to discover more about how cloud food technology is transforming fulfillment, logistics, last mile, and B2B customer experience. I hope to see you next time.